Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the average amount of time you'll want to spend on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. Even if you know nothing about ECG recognition, just a quick glance of this rhythm, you know that there's something wrong. Pretty ugly. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it and see if we can identify it. Now obviously the most striking thing about this rhythm is how fast it's going. We're looking at a 6 second strip here. We'll take the number of QRS complexes that we count and multiply this by 10 to get our rate. I'm counting 21. So 21 times 10 is going to be 210 beats per minute. Next thing that's jumping out at me is just how wide the QRS complexes are. The next thing that I'm seeing, well, not really seeing, is the presence of any P waves. The fact that this is a wide QRS complex rhythm with no P waves would lead me to believe that this is conducted somewhere in the ventricle. As the rate is significantly higher than 100 beats per minute, I can confidently say that this is a ventricular tachycardia. If I wanted to, I can be more specific and actually say that this is a monomorphic VTAC. Now it may appear that there are some areas that look a little different, but you've got to realize that there is some baseline wander that's occurring here. You can see some patient movement has actually changed where the baseline would be on this rhythm strip. Let's next examine the scenario. So we're dispatched to a private residence for a 72-year-old female complaining of crushing chest pain and shortness of breath. The patient appears diaphoretic and pale and is exhibiting increased respiratory effort. Vital signs are as follows, blood pressure of 84 over 42, pulse of 220, respirations 34, and SpO2 of 92% on room air. As the vast majority of your points in static cardiology are scored by actually treating the rhythm correctly, we need, to make, we need to first identify whether or not this patient is stable or unstable so we can choose the side of the ACLS algorithm that we want to follow. Now for unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD. And this of course stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Based on this patient's presentation as well as her vital signs, I can confidently say that this patient is unstable. So my final diagnosis for static cardiology is going to be an unstable monomorphic VTAC. Let's move on now to the treatment. Just like all of our static cardiology cards, I'm going to begin treatment by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV O2 monitor. Now, because I've determined that my patient is unstable, and as the saying goes, unstable gets the cables, I'm going to be performing synchronized cardioversion. To do this, 
I'll consider sedating my patient first, then attaching the pads and pressing the sync button on my monitor. I'll then select my energy, beginning at 100 joules. I'll press charge, and then when ready, I'll press and hold the shock button to deliver the energy. I'll repeat this as necessary up into a maximum energy setting of 360 joules. Finally, I'm going to say rapid transport and get my next card. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And remember to make your own custom playlist for you to practice with for your national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.